so talking about thread pitch, thread pitch, uh, this is about 13 threads per inch, TPI, threads per inch. And that's pitch. And what does that mean? That means in one inch, look at the bot in the screen and look at the bottom left inside the, the bolt part. That's a nut there. And picture yourself walking around the outer edge of that bolt as a ramp, if you will, going around and around as you come all the way up to the up that ramp, you come all the way around again, but when you're finally back towards the front of the ramp again, that goes around to do that in one inch, you'd take, if it's 13 threads per inch, you would have to go around 13 times to equal one inch. That, that works in your favor sometimes because, I'm sorry, the screen's moving a little bit. Um, it works in your favor sometimes because now it can give you a finer thread. The more ramps you have, the finer you can, your thread will be, so you can get into a thinner material with the more threads. If you only had one ramp, you can see that it would be pretty loose. This makes sure you have a tighter connection the more thread ramps you have. Um, now, this is very, very interesting, very beautiful, but the, at one point you create too fine of a thread, and now it's only used for low-end things like plastics. Um, your metals, your, your engines and things like that are 13, pretty much. Now 13 threads per 13 revolutions per inch. So it's kind of beautiful if you can see that now, that spiral, that helix surface. And I have another way to show it to you, and I'm gonna do it in another video. But let's jump into this video and talk about failure. You're looking at a brittle failure. We'll look at the base of the screw. This is the uh, where you start turning the bolt in. You can see it has a start, a start point. Let me rotate. We rotate some more. You can see it has a start point in a moment. There we go. Right there. That's your start point of threading onto a bolt. Take note of the taper. So this is why you can't just run a bolt right to the very back of this. It doesn't work because the taper, let me see if I can show you with this. I'm gonna put a piece of metal across the face of this and Take note of the taper of the threads. You see that in this one, this one you could use. Um, let me lay it down flat a little more better than that, a little better than that. Come on, baby. Okay. This one, your first two threads. You can see that little daylight between the first two threads. Well, that, that would... That's not a point of anchoring these first two threads. So one, one, so it's one and the one out here too. So this is this bolt will require you at least two threads exposed, and then you would be able to get securing on the red remaining uh, one, two, three, four. So let's grab the nut that fit, fits this. Bear with me. And as we grab the nut that fits this, you see the see what I'm talking about right there? where this is still loose. If I turn it in one more turn, one more thread, now we're, now we're in business. Now we have a full contact surface area. Now this is the play. I'm using a pencil, pushing against it. That's a tip, graphite. That is your play, your lashing, if you will. And that's gonna be on all of them. Let's go ahead and dial that little lady all the way up to the point of failure. And there's the nut. This shows the sheer thread section, sheared threaded section. And let's go from there. It won't thread down anymore unless I force it. But it, clearly these threads are still intact. And the spacing is equal. There is nothing going on here. The, the failure happened in this section right here. I would surmise that if I measured from here to here, that the thread count would, would not change. That the only thing that happened there was shearing off the face of these guys. That if I could darken it as we're doing here, that you would see that this thread count is probably still in the same thread count. That they would be still spaced the same distance. 
Okay, I want to show you one more thing here. Here's another one. And you can see that, that that's the one I probably pulled out before I let it totally strip out. I backed it out in time. Here's another one. Where are you? Oops, this is undamaged. <laughs> that's not another one. A brittle break under a, a fracture. And you can see it tearing, the metal fatigue. You see it tearing the thread apart right here. Right there between the two threads. Literally pulling the thread apart. It was going to keep trying to peel it. But then it failed up the lower top or deck, the upper deck. This area here. Okay, so what we're looking at is the top of a screw that, um, a bolt. This is what it looks like in failure. There's your fracture. Let's move this one out of the way and let's present. Let's present this one. And you can see that the, the, the same things happen. It tears it right at the root. Right at the root. Let me rotate. Right at the root. That's its weakest point. Where it just shears it off. And that's the rest. You're looking at the remainder fold it over if you will minor shank the inner part is your minor shank and your outer shank your outer your major shank is from the outside of these threads outside is the major the weakest point of course would be the the center but you see the way it rips it always rips as all my showing all, all my experiments have shown it always rips at the at the base let me rotate that a little bit, and you can see how it even folds it over as it's ripping off. As this is going clockwise, it folds back on itself. Right there, folding back on itself. And look at the hairline fracture. You can see the table, if you will, what's left, this table, what's left is just a clean rip clean shear. As you can see the same thing happened there as you're looking at the top of the where the bolt, this is the bolt, the nut rather, still connected. I apologize for getting that backwards so much. There's the nut still connected and that's the bolt in the center of the screw if you will. You can see the clearances around there. Right there if you look, you see the clearance between the bolt and the uh, or the screw, however you like to think of it, a bolt and the nut. That little bit of clearance. Remember, we're looking at it at a microscopic level. So as it's rotating, screwing down, it screwed to one side at that point. The screw, it's it's always some play in these guys where it's connecting. As we look at the top two threads there, you can see the top two th this top thread is not the issue as I rotate it more. So take a look at that. What's noteworthy is you can see part of the the, the metal that's folded up in there and that's that gulling part that's holding you um right there i'm getting confused with a bird a lot gall bird gulling i always like to put a u in it um, you also see the face if you can see when this was rolled or m manufactured you can see it gave a slight um looks like almost lettering on it of course it's not lettering but that would probably be some type of chatter or something of that nature, even maybe screwing it in to this point of fail. No, I, I screwed it in one time. So it's just be something that would grab also. All this stuff is minor. Now you can imagine, but it creates fix, friction, and that can give you a false um, torque reading, a uh, premature torque reading that you don't have yet. So looking at this, you can see that, see that micro gap? It didn't even touch it. It it's kind of cool, right? You can see right there. You see the gap between the threads and the nut. So that's not touching. Not your issue. So during the clamping action, there was something between this nut and the top of the bolt. After it reached its maximum torque value, if you will, it elongated the best it could before it fractured. And that's what you're looking at. The brittle fracture. The sudden fracture. The tear.
the ripping. You're looking at the shiny part would be the flanks. Right at the bottom of the flank or the top of the flank as you see it. I call it the bottom because it is the bottom. But it's the top of the video right about there where I'm showing. Um, that is the root. That's the weakest point part. Obviously, the threads are on the outside, so they're not going to be contributing as as a uh, resistance as much. They transfer the load onto the center shank. So now the base would be the the root. The root is where it rips from, um, right at the very very edge of it, which is right there. Let me see if I can get the oops too much. Right the lower part of this pencil, right on this table, this is what I call rather the table of the fracture, your stress fracture that was created by the, the stress fracture that was created by the torquing, the rotation of the bolt. That's what that fracture looks like. It's beautiful. Look at it, just right at the root. Take a look at that again. That's the uh, the side walls or the flank. And that's what we're looking at. It has no contact. It's not in contact with the nut. So for clarity, you have something between the nut and the bulk, a clamp. I use the uh, spacer. As it snugs up, it can no longer go any. It no longer can compress anymore. But the bolt itself becomes under tension. The screw bolt, however you like to look at it. As you're still rotating the, turning the screw, the bolt, it still attempts to spiral down, helix down into the nut. It can only do, and that increases the tension, the clamping force. At some point, it is too much tension on the bolt, the nut, I mean, too much tension on the bolt, the screw, the shank, the middle shank of it, and it fails under brittle fracture. And this is what the brittle fracture looks like. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Beautiful. And that's where just the last part that tears off. First it, it uh, fractures, and the last part you see is where it just rips off. The last part just tears off, but the rest is a nice fracture. It's a, it's a, it's a fracture. That's why you get that clean table. It's a clean, sharp break on the, on the flat part. And the last part is the last part that holds on. It's just a matter of tearing off at that point. So you can see that the nice table there, I call it. 